Hey, top of the morning to you. I'm Michael. Grandkids call me Rue. And uh, even though I sound like I could sing bass for the Oak Ridge Boys, <laughs> I am here. I've got some congestion. That's Paolo congestion. There's Paolo congestion. It goes from here down to my uh, blunt stones. Uh, those are the boots that I wear. And um, I live in those boots, actually. I, you know, I'm very cowboyish about my blunt stones. I might sleep in them, but... Um, Hope you're well. I'm hanging in there. I am. Um, I'm. I'm just on the edge of the precipice. I can still see over into the ravine, but uh, I'm taking it easy, and so I'm going to move slowly today. And uh, honestly, I've sketched a little bit every day with a cup of tea, just as I get up and have a cup, and and um, and then I'll go. Okay, that's a good sketch. I'll go back and lay down for a while. So it's been that way for quite a few days. It has been a hoot. Needless to say, here, and let's hear it. Ah, there's my bell. Uh, it's that really not a bell. It's this little cup that, that reminds me that I'm a, uh, you know, I'm not a real kleptomaniac. I just happened to be painting in a place and took this from the restaurant. And, and it's three and a half hours from here to take it back. And it's it only costs 28 cents at a kitchen supply store. And so if I send them 28 cents, they're going to go, what else did that guy take? So I'm going to wait till I go back and take a painting with it. But it's just a little syrup cup, but I do have it in my hand. It reminds me of a beautiful trip that I had where a blue glass and met. Uh, and so, you know, it's I, I also paid them several thousand dollars. Uh, so I'm sure they're not worried about this little cup. But um, I like the way it rings, as they say in the South. So it stays here on my desk. I use it to paint out of, and um, I don't know. It sounds like I need some Tennessee hot whiskey or something to make a toddy out of, but I, uh, I don't like the taste of that, so I won't be drinking any of that. Anyway, hope you're well today. I'm, I'm uh, going to be sounding a little stopped up, so turn up your um, volume just a little bit, and I'll try to uh, talk a little slower than I normally do. And I'm not on a big kick today. I still will answer some questions. If you want to throw them out there, you can throw them out with a Q. Boop, 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 a couple cues so I can catch it in the feed. The screen that I look at is not very large. You know, I see this and I just see a bunch of go by over here. Sometimes it catches my eye. So I'll look over every now and then. If I see a couple cues pop up, this is not like doing a live stream where I'm seeing everything in a uh, upfront video format. I, since I have a painting desk here, which is my surface, I have to look over here to catch something or I have to look out. And so, um, you know, this is just my upstairs office studio and I've got wires run everywhere and cameras set up so we can do this. But it started snowing last night again about 8.15 and snowed until about 1 a.m., I think. Got up a couple times to, you know, just get a glass of water and peek out the window and went, oh my gosh. And it, it barely, it was just a cold, misty, cold, cold snow. It's in the twenties this morning. And so everything was white, but right now there's this high pressure and the sun is just streaking across. So it's this yellow, orange glow across the snow. It, it's worth taking a look at. And you see how bright that is. Woohoo! That's pretty awesome. Anyway, so if you've got a question, I'll throw it out there. If it's about COVID, I probably can't answer it. Um, it's no joke. It comes on and, um, like a freight train, you think, oh, I just got the flu, but you know, I pushed through the flu a few times in my life and this just didn't feel like pushing through. This feels like, uh, uh, you better just rest and let this move on on its own. And so that's kind of what, uh, I've been doing Carol too. She's actually feeling better than I am. I think, uh, she just, uh, doesn't have any taste. But it's, uh, she said yesterday or two days ago, she said, hey, 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 I think, I think I smell the garlic. And so that's good. You know, it's always a test. Just, I've been wearing one around my neck. He's not a, <laughs> hey, so, uh, uh, Miss Carla, thank you for your take vitamin C paintings. But, you know, every time in my life I have taken vitamin C, I've gotten a cold. So there are other vitamins that I've tried to take, um, and then I have I have had my fill of hot tea, and I'm still pouring it down. Here's the desk. Let me show you what the desk looks like this morning. I've cleaned it off just a little bit. There's top of the morning to you. And um, I will tell you what I've been sketching uh, on my – I'm sorry I didn't clean off my pad this morning because I usually start with a clean sheet. But, you know, I hadn't been to the art store in a while. <laughs> also, <laughs> excuse me, I have a um, video queued up. 
There's a G. Did I say Q or G? But uh, <laughs> a Q, if you got a question, uh, Q, 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 or just a couple Qs, capital. I'll see you those maybe. And I'm gonna I'm gonna enlarge the screen just a little bit so I can see these questions come in just a little more. It could be my glasses need to be uh, cleaned up just a little bit here. Let me pull this screen over just a little. Come on, screen. What's going on here? How will that work? Oh, well, there we go. Look at that. Well, aren't you something? Donna Cell Barton, good morning to you. Hey, if uh, if you see me disappear all of a sudden and um, and the video starts, it's called I've gone into a coughing fit and it'll be my uh, uh, segmented cover for uh, for me to just go uh, lean over here and uh, <coughs> like that and cough a little bit. It's just going to linger and linger and linger. The doctor says, hey, guess what? <clears throat> You're going to have this for a while. It's going to take you uh, the next 57 years uh, or eight, 857, something like that to get over it. So um, anyway, so let me say good morning to you. Pat Brooks, welcome to you, the show, my friend. And Bob uh, Heidenrich, morning from the frivolous cornfields of Iowa. Frivolous it is. And uh, life is short and can it kind of be frivolous. Make a difference in your frivolity. And uh, there's not enough frivolity to go around sometimes. Lisa, thank you from Aloha, Lisa says, from Brooklyn. That is such a dichotomy, isn't it? Aloha from Brooklyn. I love it so much. <laughs> Randall Taylor Craven, thanks for being on the show. Denise Albright, Kim Sheets, Rise and Shine. Um, how are you brighter today? Whoa, what a great question that is. That is a great question. Jim Poole, morning from Snow in Raleigh. Dr. Poole, thanks for being on the show. Dr. Jim Poole, when he gets up on Saturday mornings and uh, has his uh, Mountain Dew, <laughs> he, is, he is a Mountain Dew in the mornings because, well, because he's fast brain like me, right? Dr. Jim Poole, who wrote um, the book, I got to fiddle around with the outline of that book when we first met, man. I, and I, he knows this story, and it's true. I went into his office upstairs, this little uh, office building he was in, and he said, hey, I'm thinking about writing a book. And he gets up from his desk and he opens up this, this, um, you know, one of these big planning things. And it's your wooden panel goes back this way and this way. And it's just covered with words. And I'm going like, oh, my gosh, I have come home. And uh, But he said, I want to write a book about that. And so I told him first he had to shoot a picture of it and erase it. And then. And then write 10 things to start with, because uh, like me, he's got 7,000 things he wanted to start with. But he wrote the book called, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I've forgotten the book I was about to call. Whoa, man. <coughs> flipping, flipping ADHD on its head. Uh, instead of calling people that you're, oh, you're, you're ADD or ADHD, he would say to them, you're fast brain. And, um, you know. I love the fact that I'm fast brain. I love the fact that my art is fast brain. And so I'm going to go a little slower today just because COVID is no joke. But uh, in the process, we're going to paint some things. So I've been uh, sneaking into the kitchen in the mornings and quietly making a cup of tea. When I wake up, and I haven't been in a rush to wake up because this thing will whip you. And I'll have a cup, and I've been sitting there watching, and then I made sure the birds are fed before the first snow came. And one of my favorite sights in, in the world is when the cardinal comes in and, and just sort of makes those first prints in the snow. And there's this contrast of this red and white, just gorgeous cardinal making this, like out there saying, I got to find the seed somewhere. And I'd, I'd put the seed out for him. And, and I, I wanted to say to him and put up a little sign that says, it's over there, you nutcase. It's just right over there. But I don't do bird signing or bird language. But anyway, um, communicating sometimes is difficult. And, and that's the way it is with people like me who are fast break. You, you have to find the language in which to communicate to them too. And so if I could draw him a picture, I thought, hey, if I could draw that bird a picture of the feeder, he might get it. And so anyway, uh, I drawing, drawing birds. So I thought this morning I'd do a couple birds for us because I have all this little scrap paper here. Just take some time to do that. And uh, we'll do that. So uh, Susan Peters, thanks for being on the show. Pat Brooks, John Robert Small. Hey, man, I'm getting back from the COVID blues. Bless you. If you have a question this morning, Chip Fur, glad you're feeling better. Thank you, man. Alice Durham, Catherine Brousseau. Um, Tia, thank you for being on the show all the way from Maine. And we have a connection, of course, in Greenville. A good friend named Skeeter who may be on the show. Irma Burton, blessings to you. Lori Stanley Hire, Handel Meyer Henderson. 
Linda Linhart, Rhonda DeHart. Okay, so Jason, glad you're on the show today. Fine feathered friends. How about that? A perfect tee up for painting a bird or two this morning. I always paint birds. Roosters are birds, but sometimes I like to get a little more finesse. And so uh, today I want to talk about old tools. Here's a bunch of them right here. Let me just show you my uh, picture in picture. There it is right there. Just scooted them over here. These are some of my regular old tools that I use. Pens, pencils, this little pad. These are these are American Journey paints. They're just in a Van Gogh or Gulf, depending on what part of France you're from. Um, just just a little uh, Van Gogh container because I like it. Doesn't take up much room on my desk. Sometimes I reach over here and get just the, in this mess pile if I'm just putzing around. And then of course I use some liquid colors. But I love pens. I sketch with pens so much. I love fountain pens extremely. Uh, they are just, they're everything to me, man. I love journaling with them. I love painting with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw out some small pieces of paper because I don't throw any scrap paper away. Sometimes I throw some bad paintings away, but not the scrap paper. And I thought I'd paint some. So, And uh, let's do a few birds. Jennifer Yens, thanks for being on the show. Renee King, thank you for being here. Pat Lightbody, Nancy Catlett, Karen Binder. Uh, Jimma Jensen, Pat Thompson. Good grief. There's just so many people who pile on here. I'm blessed. I'm so blessed and highly favored, uh, even amidst the COVID. Uh, so I'm going to slow down because I'm talking too fast. And um, thanks, Jason. I appreciate your comments. Everybody has just, and listen, Roos Crew cards to me. I know, can I just say this? I guess I can. It's my show. Needs a bell to ring here. There's my old stolen cup. Um, you know, I did go to the doctor one time, Dr. Jim, um, and I said, I think I'm, a, I think maybe I'm a kleptomaniac. You know, I like pens and I like little containers. And sometimes if I leave places I've been working with them, I'll just forget and drop them in my bag. And he said, you know, there's a, there's a term for that. And I said, what's it called? And he said, you, you could be a kleptomaniac. I said, what should I do? And he said, you should take something for it. <laughs> Boom. I'll be here all week. It's the only joke I got today, but it came to me when I hit that little cup. <laughs> no, I shouldn't start laughing. Mm. All right. So let's see if there's if there's any questions, hit them with a Q. If you don't have any, just keep being creative. Elvira. Elvira. Giddy up. Um, pop a mile, mile. I can't believe you know that from out in the, um, the cornfields of Iowa. All right, so here we go. Chair Clark, Holly Wilson, Patricia Hazel, Mary Hamilton, Dana Smith. Well, I'm skipping through some names that are just popping up. There are more people popping on than I can answer. Do you have any stories about paper clips? Uh, I always love how you can connect words to stories. I get it. That is pretty funny. Um, I will tell you this. I met the man. You, you think, oh, my gosh, he's going to have a story about a paper clip. I met a man, not the man, but a man who worked in the film industry and in television because we were in that world for a while. And he was the guy responsible. And this is how we got into the story. I met him at an art show uh, in Texas. No, it was a junk show or something. I don't know. But he, he had on his business card, he had a little twisted thing that looked like a a, a bent paper clip. And <clears throat> on the desk was some bent paper clips. And I went, wow, is this guy a paper clip sculpturalist? And I said, I inquired, tell me about the paper clip. And he was, he said, oh, oh, oh I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I, I've got to run around here and settle a payment with a guy. So his wife steps up and she says, I'll tell you. And he'll mention it some, but um, he was the guy who made the little sculptures uh, for MacGyver. You know, MacGyver would always take paper clips and make them into little sculptures of some sort, you know, and leave them sitting around. And this guy made a lot of those little sculptures on paper clips. So you never know. See, there's a story about paper clips. So you can do sculptures out of them. I love it. Uh, there's a paper clip story right there. 10 degrees in Ohio. Yuck, I don't miss it. All right, let's get started here painting. Terry Tardy, 
Uh, Turquoise is on live from out in uh, Coos Bay, Oregon. And Rosie BG is on this morning. I just love that. If I my name was Rosie BG, I'd I'd have I'd probably have it on my jacket. Um, Mary McNett, thank you for being on the show this morning. June Jones, always a pleasure to see you. Elaine Annette's here. Uh, Jacqueline Browse from way up in uh, Babe in the Blue Ox country. See, I remember all you guys are. Uh, first time, Mary Carr says from Franklinville, New Jersey. Mary Carr, welcome to the show. I had a dear friend named Mary Carr years ago in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. So there we go. See, all those names are real. Love it, love it, love it. All right, thanks for being on. Uh, Laurie Belushi, thank you for being on the show. Kelly Berger, Judy Yaw, Michelle. Always, Michelle, appreciate your humor and your wit and <coughs> a lot of other things. Shula Ruby. <laughs> love that name. All right, here we go. Um Look at this. In my CAD class, I'm having my students take a break from computer and draw old school using T-squares, triangles, and pencils. Golly, I love that so much because I'm going to talk about that today. I'm going to talk about using tools in a new way. And no kidding, if I had one little note to show you today, it's right here. Look, it says, this is my notes for the show, so don't be too impressed. And I'll show you what I wrote it on the back of this morning while I was having tea. Haven't done a whole lot of planning, can you tell? New ideas and new touches and new concepts for old tools. And so the, the concept sometimes is just to look at things differently. Remember when we first started this class a couple of years ago, I would say, people would say, how come you have so many glasses? You have a pair on your head, you have a pair on your face. I go, these are not glasses, this is a headband. I have my hair pulled back today. I'm an old man that wears long hair, always have. And, and so folks go, they don't know what to do with that, but so what? It's, it's not their problem. It, it's, it's my deal because my wife likes long hair and I like long hair. And so I wear long hair and, um, it makes me look on the line sometimes. And Steve painted a, um, um, Steve painted a, um, a portrait of me and, and I look like, uh, I look like the line from, uh, uh, Wizard of Oz. And somebody said that the other day. I did this self-portrait when I said, uh, this is what I've been doing while I've had COVID. Here's my little self-portrait here. That's, that's what I've been doing. And I, I've said, gosh, I do. I look like a lion. Um, not a liar, a lion. All right, so here we go. Small pieces of paper. And let's paint a bird. And let's paint a cardinal. I've got a friend who needs to learn to paint a cardinal. So let's just start with the small one right here on this piece of paper. Here we go with the fountain pen. And then I'm going to tell you about a new tool that I just got, if I haven't lost it already. Uh, I've been waiting on this letter for, I think, nine months. I sent him a note and said, hey, send me this free pen you put out. It's Savoir Faire, McPherson's, um, out in Emeryville, California. And uh, they, they handle Fabriano paper, and they sent me a new piece of Fabriano Artistico paper, which I do love Artistico paper, by the way. And uh, it's mold made. It's This is the new, ready? There's hot press, there's cold press, there's rough press, there's soft. This is the new soft press. Uh, natural white, 100% uh, cotton, and I haven't tried it. So we're going to try it this morning. And they sent me a letter with it, and they put in this new pencil. And there it is right there. It's called, Some of you already may have it, uh, but it took my nine months to get here from the date. Uh no kidding. I'm not, I'm not being uh, facetious. C create a color, which I see these around. But here's the thing. This says aquagraph teal. So it looks like a regular little pencil when you sort of sketch with it. See, there you just, and let's just do it. I'm going to use it. <coughs> here, <coughs> use it on something else here. Here's, here's a little piece of paper right here. Let's use it on this. Let's just paint a little bird with it. There's a little, there's a bird's head. There's a bird's body. It looks like a seagull's beak. Really not into painting a seagull today, but maybe I should. Maybe I should be at the beach. All right, so there's um, and there's there's and then his um, some feathers out here, his tail feathers. There's a wing. Can you see that? That's I, I, let me move in just a little bit here. There we go. That's a little better, huh? A little out of focus, but th uh, that I'm like Bigfoot. I'm a little bit out of focus. Okay, so here we go. Comes in like this, and um, there's the birds, and, and, and we'll put him on a little snow. Here, look at this. This will be fun. Shoop, shoop, shoop. 
Pew, 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 pew. What's that? Those are tracks coming into the snow. All right. Leave a little footprints in the snow. All right. So, so I'm thinking that this is probably, um, now that I see his beat come together, he's going to be a little wren, a little house wren, man. They are messy. They're out in the snow today. See them with the Cardinals. It says this pencil is teal, and, and it also said that this new water-soluble pigment is released when it gets water on it. So we're going to find out. Let's just put a little uh, music on here and see what happens. Let's see if I can focus that just a little better. Should have a little teal in it here. Let's see if it does. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. You see that little bit of a blue tint come in there? Terry Tardy says the Van Gogh experience is in Portland. I'm going to it next Saturday. Terry, I'd be interested in hearing your take on it. Uh, some of my friends, I'm just going to tell you right now, have been underwhelmed. So um, that, that was not fun for me to hear, but it was true. So I just thought I'd pass that on to you. So now you've got nowhere to go. Why'd you tell me that, she says. She didn't really say that. I just did. So I'm throwing a little bit of, and by the way, I'm using this brush in, in not a new way for me, but it may be a new way for some of you. And that's what I was going to talk to you about today. Um, just, just learning to use your old tools in new ways is kind of a fun thing to do sometimes, you know, and I'm not talking about using as everything in the shop as a hammer. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying, you know, we, we tend to take tools and we say, okay, look, see this brush? It must mean that I have to paint like this. No, you don't. Take this brush and, and put it in and, and paint with it in a different way, you know? Put it on its edge and use it to erase some color. Maybe put the snow in with it. You know, snow should be a little blue underneath here. Let's just put the snow in there like that with this brush. And, Use it on its edge, pushing it in. Not just painting everything the way the brush is shaped. Sometimes I just want to just uh, make up a use. And that's why I use these bamboo brushes, these Yasutomo brushes, but I use them in ways that I don't even think, I think the reason that sometimes um, uh, Yasutomo has me on their show is because I don't use their tools the way their artists use their tools. They go, this guy, is painting loose birds and roosters and whimsical stuff, and he's using our tools. He's using precise Asian tools to just make himself be looser. And I think there's some fun in that that we miss sometimes when we when we pay too much attention to, to the way the thing's been done. I'm not talking about using the wrong wrench for the wrong nut, or you know, I'm I'm just saying find a better way to use that and push paint around. Same with fountain pens. Everybody thought fountain pens were these precise desk pens that you just wrote thank you notes with. And then when I started using them for watercolor, I joined a group of people who had been noting and sketching forever. And dip pens, artist pens, they were using those pens forever. And now I use them as part of the watercolor. And so it works. I'm going to show you a difference of what I'm talking about just on this, okay? All right. Um... So Jason, I like using old school tools to just come back in with T-squares and <clears throat> making a line across the bottom and then, you know, going out and, and finding a dinner plate. You know, the other day I uh, had a circle I wanted in that painting and I just used my banjo head for the for the whole concept. And so I, I think uh, I, th I think what we can do is um, we can stretch the edge of the envelope a little bit. Let me show you a red bird. This is a little wren that I started. And by the way, uh, I think he needs some work. I probably used the wrong color. You don't put teal in wrens, but I think I'm going to come back to him. And I'll probably dust a little of this um, black-brown 
somewhere in here and just bring in some more of this. And I'm going to get him the way I like him before I'm done with this. I promise you I will. I would love to have my little uh, fountain pen right in here. I think I did create a little spot there. Yep. And just touch that with this wet and put a little dark in his bill. Look at that. He's coming together right there. See there? And I put him on the snowbank. And so he's out there looking for some seed. Or he's saying to me, get your big old self off of online and get out here and feed us. Here's, uh, here's what I've been doing while I've been sitting watching the Cardinals. Just need a Cardinal sitting in a limb. And so I'm just going to doodle something out here. And this is what I'm saying. Just use your fountain pen like it's a, how do I say old tool? Don't use this new create a color pencil just like it were a crayon. Does that make sense? Here, here's what we want to do sometimes. We, we want to get this little drawing of this little birdie. You know, here's, here's a little bird. And then what we want to do is we want to lay this pencil down like a crayon, like a kid does in the first grade. And we want to color all this in. And we want to make sure that we don't leave any little spot uncovered. Just, oh, just get it all covered up. Who, who is it that says we had to do that? And then we don't want to run out of the lines. Oh, golly, no, please don't. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying, just come in there and just start making some marks and let your crayon dance if this is a crayon. Run out of the lines a little bit. Rough him up. You know the little bluebird that I do. Yeah, this would be a great little uh, this would be a great little thing for the bluebird. You know, the little bluebird has this long little bill, and he's got this little rough head. It's just all fuzz and feathers. It comes around like this. He's my little bluebird right here, and he's got a little round eye right there. He's got a, look at this. I'm just letting this, my hand, um, it's great if I have nervous energy. This is, this is two cups of tea into um making this little bluebird and he's got a little bit of blue up on his head right here. And I might just take my finger and see if some of that teal's coming out. And it's starting to, I can already see it. And then what I want to do is <coughs> cough <coughs> is come in here and uh, thought I was going to have to go for my video there for a second. Just come in and add a little bit of real blue on this now. And so you see how fast these little birds come into view and he needs a little bit of orange in his belly right here. And I'm just dancing this brush in, and I'm just touching it like this. I, I um, was teaching a man to rust metal recently, and I said, yeah. you know, we could get this metal rusted if you had, I think I told you the story, if you had six months and you just laid the steel out here, or even six and a half weeks, if you laid the steel outside here of your building, and uh, you let the leaves fall on it, and the rains come, and then the sun, and the heat, and the rains, and the, and the wind. And if you just let it alone in six, in six weeks to six months, it'd be the perfect steel. And they said, yeah, but we need it in two days. So I said, what you can't do then is go get a roller and just roll water on it, or maybe a chemical on it, and expect it to look natural. You got to splatter, and you got to splash, and you got to drop. And the snow that I see scattered on my yard this morning is sporadically. And you think, oh, no, it's a, it's a clean blanket. And you go, no, it, it really isn't at all. Except what does concern me right now is the big old deer tracks that just went through my yard. Um, but my point is, is that it's undulations and it's rough. And there's places where it, it the rock was warmer than the earth and the earth was colder than this. And, and so it, it is all sporadic. So the same way is done here with my brush. And I just drop this in here sporadically like this. And I run out of the lines. And what I wind up with is this little bluebird that has some life to him. And he looks a little more natural. Um, this is, this is a, a, a dichotomy, especially from Jason's work, where people have to be precise because, well, things are built to square. And that's a hard thing to do. So he has a hard shift from architecture and yet the people who learn the perspective of ar architecture and they see that vanishing point or they see that line extending out or they see the skew of how a line really can't be drawn flat on the piece of paper but it's got to go at this arc to give you the the slant and the perspective when you get that your sketches and your journals become a whole lot better so i want to show you one more bird but this will give you a good idea of just how i'm using tools in a different way this morning. All right.
Uh, let me just grab a piece of paper. Oh, I had one right here. Here it is, right here. All right. Let me let me pull out just a little so you can see a little more of what I'm doing here. All right. Back it up just to give you a little bit of this. All right. It's uh. Hey, I'm I'm hanging in there this morning. Thank you for uh, being along with me. I'm Rue. People call me Rue. My grandkids do anyway. Uh. <clears throat> Boy, you're fast brain in COVID. <laughs> I appreciate it all. The cards, the prayers, the comments. Um, uh, you know what? I, I, I definitely have had some brain fog, Kim. No kidding. I really have. I've been, I, I woke up the other day and said, what, what was I reading? I have no idea. And I, went, I can't even read that anymore. And I, I finished a couple of emails yesterday and I went, okay, that's it. I got to go lay down. So, um, <clears throat> Do you sketch your designs of your metalwork before you start fabricating them? Uh, sometimes, Jason, I do. Um, I'd usually, in blacksmithing, I use, uh, if I'm teaching, I do. Right now, if I were going to make this little leaf right here, if I were going to forge out another one of these little leaves, I would not sketch this out before I started. It's just something that I've done, like making a, a hook. If I were going to do this right here, no, I wouldn't need a sketch. But if I were going to teach you how to do this, then we would grab a piece of paper and we would. In fact, I'll just do that for you in a second. But first, I'm going to draw this bird. So let me lay that hook there to remind me. That's a great question. Thank you for the question. Um, but then I would not be angry if my... 3D model tend to take on a little more flow and curvature and naturalness as opposed to the lines. But the lines would tell me the basics of where I was going to go with it. Now, if I had to do a hundred of these and they all had to look the same for someone's kitchen bar, one is I'd tell them, no, you got the wrong artist. Two is one time I had to do 15 plant hangers that were identical for a man's porch. So I wound up making the first one and I took it to him and I set it on his porch and said, what do you think of this? And they were quite large. And he said, I love it. Now I need 15 more that look just like it. And I got back in the truck telling my boys, you know what he's going to say? If he likes it, he's going to say, I want 15 more that look just like it. And that's going to be the crux of my existence making 15 more that look just like it but we built a jig to make sure that all the measurements were the same so i could turn it and twist it and hit it and tweak it and uh, that's how i do it so sometimes you work ahead of the game in art and sometimes you work backwards I, you'll know what i mean by that okay all right so here's a cardinal for you let me just show you what i've been doing with cardinals um Quan, thank you for being on the show. There is no way that I could translate what you just said to me, but I appreciate the note. And I thank you for being in another country today watching this. Blessings to you if you're translating um, an email. Good morning from uh, uh, Hendersonville. Missy Steelwell says, Missy, here we go. Cardinals. Um, let's draw one. Uh, Donna Buckley, Donna Buckley, you were the one who sent me this. You remember this? You sent me the note and said, hey, this company's giving away a sample pen, which, by the way, this pen's available down at Michael's today when it took me nine months to get it. I didn't know it was a creative color, which made me laugh, but I got it. So I showed it to you. Uh, Chris says she got it. Several of you did that. So <clears throat> uh, Jacqueline Goodrich um, from Oregon, great uh, how did, how did Rue transition from a Cardinal to a Wren? I left for a hot minute, came back, uh, he took his coat off. He, uh, he left the church. <laughs> That's for you, Kim Sheets. How did the Cardinal become a Wren? She said, just like that. He walked off from the, uh, big church in Rome and said, I'm, I'm going to be a Wren. Going to be a house Wren. Well, there is a church red too, so I'm not too far off. All right, here we go. So this this uh, cardinal, I'm back to the cardinal, should go like this. See, this is when you know you're ADD or a fast brain. You can just flip around like birds can. You ever notice painting a bird? You got to be out there. Uh, if you haven't walked in the woods and picked up leaves that are cold or leaves that are covered with snow or leaves that have fallen this fall and you want to sketch leaves then you're missing out. Same with tracks of birds and same with bird feathers and same with, you know, books that teach about birds. So you're going to have to dig into this world a little bit. All right. Uh, let's put on a little bit of music here. 
All right, this little cardinal has come to the seed bin, and I see him sitting on a limb. Well, I don't. I wish I did, but I see him sitting on a limb, and uh, he has a beak a lot like the rooster's beaks for me. So if you're, that's another thing that you need to study and apprentice under is drawing birds' beaks and birds' feet and all those little things and like. Uh, this little wren should probably have a little sharper beak because he he pulls things out of the earth. Uh, he's a forager. This little guy is, eats mealworms. He's got a little long nose and he's got some dark in here. He's got a little eye like so. All right, so this bird here has what I call a beak a little bit like it's a little fuller and a little short sharper. He's a seed cracker. You don't see the cardinals down in the ground pulling out worms. They're foragers, okay? You gotta know that about the birds. Okay, so here he is. So his beak looks something like that. There it is right there. Okay? Kind of like that. You go like, yeah, that's not bad. And then, but he's his his eye is here, and it's more like this shape. And it's right in there above his nose. You know, I always just put my rooster's eye just out there in front, but he's got a little more of a rounded eye. And then he's got all this just scratching, fuzzy, feathery mess under here that's kind of black. And I'm just using my pen for that and a little over the side. Then comes up on his head and there's some loose feathers there. And then you've got what makes him the cardinal. He's got on his little, you know, his, his um, I don't know what, his, what that is, his, his, his feather, his crown. Yeah. And so... Um, and then he comes down like this, and then he's got a little bit of bump around here. I'm, now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw some parts down there like that. See that? Look at that. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this bird on a limb on a pine tree. Because <laughs> I've got some pines up in my backyard. So I'm going to draw his toes right there, and then I'm going to draw the limb coming down like this. Maybe the limb, maybe he's over the limb. Maybe there's a piece of the limb back here. And then let's just go ahead and draw this limb in here. Uh, if I love this sound right here. Listen to this. Hang on a second. Let me just stop the music. Listen to this. Can you hear this? Listen. Love this fountain pen sound. Listen to that. I'm just drawing some little pine needles coming out. They're just stacked on top of each other like this. Maybe there's a pine cone in here, and I don't know that I've ever drawn a pine cone before, but they've got to be something like this because Fibonacci thought they were pretty cool. He counted all the little pine cones and the limbs like on pineapples uh, also. Um, those of you who haven't studied Fibonacci, well, you thought, hey, that's a good sign. My brain is coming back to me. Fibonacci. I got, I got some, uh, I think about 11... 60, 11 to 80, uh, Leonardo Fibonacci lived. And uh, he discovered uh, the Fibonacci series of how things were embraced in uh, nature, that they had certain stages and steps, and rabbits are bred that way. And uh, yeah, pretty cool. All right, Leonardo Fibonacci. All right, so there we go. So there's this little cardinal sitting in the pine tree, and I just did the pine branches with these little little hashtags and hash marks, hashtags. That tells you where I am. There's another little pine cone right there. Yeah, what are you going to do, pine cones? But they just sort of came out of there just like that. Maybe another limb that comes down like this, and uh, there's a big old piece of uh, sap hanging in there, and... Uh, Yesterday, my um, cedar trees outside, my junipers were hanging there, and the uh, robins were in, just eating a stew out of them. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm going to use this brush that I had, this um, little uh, 2.0 bamboo brush. It's got about, about a three-quarter inch thin hair on it, goat hair. See that? And I'm just going to wet it. Let me move some of these pins out of the way. Get my paint over here so you can see where I'm dipping. I'm not trying to hide anything from you. What's the point of that? Withhold nothing, right? If I know how to do it, I'll teach you. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to come in here first, and I've just got a damp brush. Let me get a paper towel here. A nice clean one there. 
<laughs> Let me do get a cleaner one so it doesn't take away from the painting. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do right now is uh, I'm just going to uh, use some damp, and I'm going to go in and grab some of that pin and let it just be the black around this um, cardinal's eye. That's the black on his face. And it may look a little heavy to you, but we'll figure that out in a second. Now I want to come in here and just put some water inside. Remember, I did this on a 140-pound paper with a fountain pen. So I know this fountain pen's going to bleed. But I'm going to dance my brush into this red. And then I'm going to go in here and just get some of this red. And look, I'm not trying to color him. I'm not in Miss Wilson's class trying to say, color in your bird, students. No, I'm saying, let that... Let that red dance around here. Leave some holidays. Just let it go. Don't even worry about bringing too much paint in at a time. Just sort of let it go. Look at this. And then let's let this come down here and just pick up the red from the, um, the black from the brush that's bleeding in. A little bit of water coming in like this. And just let it start to come in. I like the fact that if you look at a cardinal... <clears throat> You're going to see, all right, let me hold that thought. Watch this. I had a lot of pen in here and a lot of black, so I'm going to take a little bit of a paper towel. I'm just going to roll it up like the size of an eraser. And then I'm just going to reach in here and grab some of this, and touch it down, and, and take some of that out, just like that. Then we'll come back in and add a little more red right in there, just letting this brush dance a little bit. This brush is, I'm not painting with it. I'm not going like, make sure your strokes come down and turn. No, I'm not doing that. Anybody who wants to teach me like that, you're going to lose my interest in about 12 seconds because I'm not going to stick with you. Look at that. You know what? How many cardinals have a little bit of purple in them? A lot. How many have some orange in them? A lot. Okay? Now watch this. I'm going to take that orange that I just danced in. I'm going to go in here very carefully. I'm just going to outline a little bit right here with some bright orange. I'm going to clean off that brush just a tad. A little wet it. And then we'll go in and just dust up that too much. Got a little bit of the black in there, so I have to go change some of that. When that pen is so vivid on this piece of paper, there's my orange beak. A little red over this, a little purple on top of that. So it's not just one red bird. It's not just me see if I see, to see if I can get this bird to be completely red. It's dancing the colors in to make them look like they're supposed to look. Now here's where the fountain pen shines because I put in a spring green, but what happens with the pen is the pen bleeds blacker. And so I start getting this great color of this pine tree that I normally couldn't get in any other way unless I had some browns or blacks. And I just picked up a little bit of uh, uh, quinacridone gold. Hey, don't ask me to spell quinacridone, okay? Quinacridone is a series of colors that... Uh, paint colors that have come out and uh, you have to learn how to say it. Uh, I've went to school for years to figure out how to say quinacridone, but um, if I had to spell it on Jeopardy, uh, the show would be over and everybody would have left the building before I uh, figured out how to spell it. All right. So now a little bit of a pine cone down here, maybe just a little bit of brown. There it is right there. A little bit right there. And then maybe some of the tree limb coming down. And so what I have is I have this red bird sitting on this pine tree. And uh, you know what? For uh, uh, an eight-minute sketch, it's not too shabby. <clears throat> maybe a little more orange than I wanted right here. So I'll just go back to my eraser and take some of this out, like right here. Yeah. And then I'll come back in, and I'll drop a little more red right in there. See, I can do that because this is all just red wet paint all right 
So there's a little dusty cardinal sitting in the midst there. And uh, does he look a little disheveled and rough? Well, it's 20 degrees outside for heaven's sakes. Yes, of course he looks a little disheveled. My point is this. Is it a fine work of art? Fine with me. Is it a fine work of art for the Audubon Society? Probably not. But that's not who I painted it for. I painted this to to, to represent to my grandkids and the, those around me who sit at my art table. This is what I saw outside. That's what I saw, and this is how it registered to me. And within that realm, there's this amazing line of grace that makes art fine with me. How fun is that, huh? All right, let me see if there's any questions here. Let us know. Uh, it does look more like a wren. <laughs> uh, teal is my favorite color. Okay, there we go. Back about the pencil. Yeah, man, you guys have been making comments like crazy. There's a ton of folks on the show this morning. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you jumping on. What's the name of the make of that pencil again? It's called Create a Color. Um... I think you can get it at most any art store today. C R E A C R E T A C O L O R. C R E T A C O L O R. And this one is called Aquagraphic Teal. Uh, it is made by Austri Austria, A U S T R I A. Um, not Australia, but Austria. It's Austria is the name. And I think you're going to see that uh, it, it's uh, produced, it's put out by, uh, what did I do with the letter? Here it is right here. Here's the letter they sent me. Hey, we want to say thank you for your patience. You signed up for this six years ago. Uh, no, it was several months ago. <clears throat> and uh, they said, hey, you'll love this and this and this and this and this. They told me seven things I would love. But they only sent me one piece of paper, so I wasn't really sure about all the other. It was like, we're telling you about this, but we haven't seen it. Anyway, I'm going to paint on the piece of paper here because i got a few more minutes to do this on the show. We'll do another card on their paper and see what it's like. Uh, graphic pencil, graphite from Austria has been mixed with a subtle amount of water-soluble pigment. So, for whatever reason, they have shipped the graphite of this pencil in from Austria. I, you got to love marketing, okay? Of course, uh, our shipments from Europe were faced with delays during the chain supply chain shortages and port congestion issues. So these pencils have been sitting at sea for a long time. This one smells like a tarpon. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I do appreciate them sending this. And I'll do a follow-up. It says follow us up on Instagram. So I'm going to do that for them. I'm going to do a little birdie here with this thing and say, hey, Sketched your little, uh, you know, your little bluebird, uh, the little wren that I did that scared everybody away. He said, oh, my gosh, COVID has gotten to him. He was going to paint a cardinal, and lo and behold, I walk away to the coffee pot and come back, and there's a wren sitting there. Does he not know a wren from a cardinal? Okay, here we go. So let's find that piece of paper. Here it is right here. Nope. How do you lose something that fast? Here it is right here. Okay. Uh, Artistico. By the way, this paper is made by uh, Fabriano, which you know anything, if you know anything about Fabriano, 1264 is when their hammer mill started in Italy. Oh, or, uh, yeah, 1264. All right. I got one more thing to do before I paint on this paper, and I was going to show you, Jason, sometimes what I do for my... Uh, my uh, my my students in the blacksmith shop is this. I say, we're going to make this hook today. And we're going to make this hook in six steps. So what are those steps? All right. Oh, man, I wish I'd done that. Okay. So the first step is this. We're going to take a piece of quarter-inch stock. There it is right there. Quarter-inch key stock. Okay, and we're going to cut that piece of key stock. Look at this. Yeah, I even use architectural lines. We're going to cut that six 
and one half inches long. There it is right there. So I'll just do a little sketch like that, okay? Number two is that we're going to heat this piece up, one end of this up, about an inch and a half out. We're going to heat that to about 1,800 degrees. How do you know? It's going to be yellow hot. It's going to be this color when it comes out of the forge. So you're going to get, this is, this is what I do when I teach blacksmithing. And then we're going to put this in on the anvil, okay? And we're going to pound that down until it's sharpened like a square pencil. They're going to go, what? There's no such thing as a square pencil. This says, well, you can't taper round, but you can taper square and then round it off. So here's what I mean by that. So we're going to take the end of this, and we're going to pound it down until it starts to look like this. And we do that in 90 degree increments. So we hit it on the top and then we turn it 90 degrees and then we hit it on the side and we turn it 90 degrees and we hit it again and we keep doing that. So then we're going to take that down and then guess what we're going to do? This will extend this metal about another inch and a quarter. So that means we've extended our metal which isn't even there yet. One of the things you can do with metal and not wood is you can treat it like clay. You can do anything with hot metal, you, you can do, but you can't touch it with your hands. So the hammer's gonna lengthen it. As you compress the molecules and you push it forward, it's gonna get longer and it's fascinating. And then what we're gonna do is that on the tiny end of this, we're gonna go out there and we're gonna go down and we're gonna make a little bitty rat's tail, just like this. Boop. In fact, that's actual size. Boom. What? Yeah, it's not even big around as my pen. There it is right there. That's close. <clears throat> then we're going to do, and so I will take them through little drawings of each twist step and each turn and then the backside and then the half face hammer hits and how to separate the leaf and how to turn this over the horn of the anvil. And I'll, Jason, I'll take them through every step like this with small sketches and drawings. And then they'll go, hey, I, what was I supposed to do with this? And I'll go, whoa, 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 where's your plans? Where's your plans? So I'll make them go back. So I, sometimes I have them do it on paper, but sometimes I'll give them a little piece of Luan or uh, that's, that's painted like a blackboard with a piece of chalk. Or if we're on a concrete floor, they'll have to draw it on the floor, and then they'll have to lay down and do it on the floor, or a little piece of table. In this case, a black piece of pad works really well, so they can write it with a piece of chalk. So there's my answer to your questions, yes. So I do sometimes in 3D. Now, for me, I don't have to do this anymore because I see every little piece of this in my mind because I've made so many of these. I have muscle memory for this. And by the way, every function in blacksmithing, and I'll teach this in my blacksmith course, on my course that's coming out on video. Uh, <clears throat> every one of these little pieces um, is something you use in blacksmithing all the time. Just like using this brush or this pencil or this pen, all those are muscle memory pieces that you, that repetition does. Dr. Jim Poole, if you're still on the show, uh, the reason that I can communicate so well with Dr. Jim, and I love that guy's teaching style, how to help children with ADD, ADHD, fast brain, is that he had a he had a concept. When I was in young life, I used to say that the thing about humor is it works because it's repetitive. You repeat it, you repeat it, you repeat it, you repeat it. He came he did the same thing. He would say, you do this, and then you do this, and then you do this, and then you do this. The next day you do this, and you do this, and you do this, and you do this. So what you do is you not only get it ingrained in those memory parts that go together in your brain, but it comes together in your muscle memory also. And so that's, that's, uh, that's how he teaches, but that's how I teach watercolor too. What do I say about cardinals? Well, I can never draw a bird like that. No, not on your first one, but guess what's going to happen when you've done 50 of these? Guess what's going to happen when you've done 150? Guess what's going to happen when you've done 350? The time's going to come when you're at sitting with your grandkids one day, and they're going to say, gosh, I, I, look at those birds out there. And you say, oh, let's paint one. You're going to go, they're going to go, what did you just do? Can I have this? And, and you're going to make their life just buzz because you will have muscle memory of that. And they're going to go, 
I wish I could do that. You go, how many of you ever painted? They go, none. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. You see my point? All right. All right. So today, painting on different paper, um, painting on different with different paints, painting with different brushes is always different. So uh, quit worrying about it and just learn it. And say, okay, I'm going to waste some paper. I'm going to waste some paint. You still have pretty inexpensive tools to work with. You're not working with gold fillings from teeth. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Wow. Man, I can't believe I've talked up the whole time today. All right, this is Fabriano paper. There it is right there. I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to use another pen. Here, I'll use a, uh, a preppy. 2-0 right here. This is a little very inexpensive fountain pen. Uh, ceramic ink. By the way, this ink does not bleed as much as this ink. This is Pilot. This is a Pilot Kakuno pen. This ink takes off and runs. You can still see it bleeding in here. I like this blue or red. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, COVID does have an effect. I like this blue bird. Oh, red bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's paint another one. So, Let's do the same thing. Let's just let's just do a little uh, smaller bird here. I'll put him sitting on this Fabriano thing. There's his beak right there. Here's his eye. There's a little mess under his chin. Here's his head. Here's his little comb. Here he's sitting down like this. Put him here. Let's draw his feet on this little Fabriano block. So he's like the other one. And then let's just do his tail down here like this. Man, that's a noisy mess, isn't it? Okay, listen to that. This pen actually feels like it wants to quit writing. This paper is quite hard to sketch on with. Uh... Okay, so so there he is. Let's draw some more of this black in here. And I want to put his eye right here. I'm going to leave a little white in the eye. Why? Because just a regular old blocky black eye with no life in it at all shows that you got a dead bird out there. It ain't, ain't going to help you a bit, okay? So there he is. He's sitting on this Fabriano block. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to put a little music on here for another minute. I'll finish this. Here we go. Let's just throw something on. I don't care what it is. And I lost my brush. All right, I'll just use this big one. <laughs> here. Big bamboo brush. Grab a little of that. I just love to dance that ink in there. Oh, it's running pretty good. Wow. All right. This is 140 pound soft press Fabriano paper. All right, let's just dance this in here like this. Man, you know what? I do love about uh, that extra white. Golly, look at the red pop. Can you see that? That's really cool. Why'd you do that? I just felt like it needed a little brush tail going out there like that. I just kind of like the way it looked. That's pretty cool. And let's touch a little bit of this orange. I'm just reaching right in here. This is just pumpkin orange. I'm just going in there. I'm not mixing it. I'm just grabbing it like it is. I just wanted to be kind of bold. I'm not trying to make it look Audubon. I'm trying to make it just like uh, Michael Hahn. There we go. All right, then a little nose run there. Let's see if I can clean up the end of that. Yeah, it might, might be messed up there. It, it happens. Okay, so, and a little purple in here. Just touch that in a little bit. And um, I think it does need a little bit of, uh, just a little bit. I'm, I'm almost ready to leave here. It's Saturday morning, and so I'm gonna go have a cup of tea. I got a painting to finish. I have someone come about to get a painting this morning and then I'm still taking it easy. I'm having tea and I'm uh, I'm going to put in a few more rest days. Uh, I'll probably see you Monday morning. Um, I've got a metal project probably by the middle of the week that I'm going to have to get out in the yard and do some work on. Uh, thanks for loving the bluebirds. Dance with your crayons. Yeah, I love it. I love this bird. It looks so fluffy. He is a fluffy bird. All right. 
So many of you on the uh, show today, and I'm so grateful for you. Thank you for uh, um, Michelle. Thank you for the welcome to Miss Mary Carr from uh, uh, joining us today in New Jersey. Does the Cardinal feet showing? In your, does the Cardinal have feet showing in your painting? Uh, he does. They're little bitty. Uh, black uh, toes that are hanging right over the edge of the block. Uh, it's hard to see them. They're right here behind the greenery. Most of the time you don't see the bird feet, which is good for me because um, if I drew the bird feet too bold, I'd probably draw them in boots or something, you know. Uh, I don't know what kind of slippers the Cardinal the Pope wears, but I think I'd probably go in there and do something reckless like that just to offend somebody. Uh, that'd be kind of fun. But here I'll just put the little toes down here kind of what I see and then this is where that pencil may come in handy just to come in here and grab some of that teal and drop it in like this and just make some marks I just don't like my birds to look like they just got up and were spit polished I want them to look like they flew through a couple pine boughs somewhere I could take some pine branches with this teal and just add them out to this tree limb here maybe a leaf coming in here like this maybe put some leaves on this tree like that right there I know it's time to go, but hey, just give me one second here to do a little greenery in here. Yeah, just throw some green in here. Fabriano. <laughs> so, I'll send him an old Instagram and say, hey, here's your pencil underneath this green. And uh, I'm not saying it's the greatest pencil I've ever used. There's going to be lots of... Uh, I think what you got to use is any watercolor pencil that you have. Don't use it like a third grader's crayon, Okay. Use it a little lighter and with a little touch here and there and let it dance a little bit. I talk to you so much about dancing and I have no rhythm in my body to dance. I understand music, I understand timing, and, I, and I'm a musician, but I cannot dance it. My wife can tell you it's the truth. I'm not making this up. But when it comes to the art, let it flow in naturally and let it bend and curve and move a little bit. Unless you're doing line art and you're doing Zentangle. Well, I get all of that. That's a style. This is a loose watercolor style. That's kind of why you're following me, to lighten up, loosen up, and have fun with your art, and let it tell a story. Hey, um, a couple little ruse painted on extra bright paper with Joe's Red mixed in with a little Red Hot Mama, uh, some spring green, Painted over a fountain pen gives you those pine branches. Do they look perfectly like pine branches? No. Is there anybody in their right mind who doesn't say, I bet he's sitting on a pine tree? No, you get that because that's how God's made your mind so sharp. All right. So paint something creative today. Right now, just take a cup. I'm a few minutes over today, huh? Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, so here's what I want you to do. Take a sip. Another one if you need it, but think about who you're going to send a note to right now and continue to encourage them. And can I just say this one more time? Thank you for your notes and your cards and your funny, funny posts and even portraits that you send me. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, your well wishes and prayers while I've been fighting COVID. And yeah, it's no joke, but you know what? This too shall pass. I am highly favored and so are you. Send somebody a word of inspiration today, just a little hope, thought, prayer, a good comment. And does it make a difference? Dang, it does. If art doesn't do anything, it should connect us. That's so important. I'll see you Monday, Lord willing. And uh, by the way, hadn't forgotten what I'm working on. We'll probably do a class late February, early March, sometime in February. We'll uh, also talk about what I'm going to do this coming year on how Rudoodles 857 uh, needs to be on a, um, a, a different platform looking thing. So I'm working on that. And my brain has been <laughs> short, <laughs> short on that. All right. Blessings to you. I'm out of here. Appreciate you all. Um, usually I have a um, harmonica. Oh, here it is. Okay. Couldn't hire an orchestra. They wouldn't fit in the office anyway. But I like to go out on a musical note. And this would be the note.
That's close. I'm going to have to tune that cup. 